electronegativity. Before we talk about electronegativity, let's remind ourselves about nuclear charges. Each element has a distinct nuclear charge, which is equal to the atomic number. Remember, that's the number of protons. And each proton has a positive one charge. So, for example, nitrogen has seven protons. Each proton has a charge of plus one. The nuclear charge of nitrogen is plus seven. That's the charge of the nucleus. Now, this nuclear charge is the force that keeps electrons on the atom and it is the force that keeps bonding electrons shared between one atom and another atom. Different atoms are going to exert different amounts of attractive forces on bonding electrons. And this is due to two factors. One, different atoms are going to have different nuclear charges because they have different atomic numbers. And also, different atoms are going to have different sizes. The attractive force between positive and negative is stronger the closer that positive and negative charge happen to be. So small atoms are able to get the nucleus and the electrons closer together and the smaller, smaller atoms are going to have a stronger attractive pull on bonding electrons. So the ability of an atom in a molecule to attract those bonding electrons to itself is known as electronegativity. And it's really important that we remember that this is only relevant when that atom is in a molecule. We're looking at the attractive ability of bonding electrons, of that nucleus to pull bonding electrons toward it. When atoms with different electronegativity, so different abilities to pull those electrons toward themselves, are bonded together, are sharing two electrons, or four or six. This results in an unequal sharing of those bonding electrons because one of the atoms is able to pull more electrons toward it than the other. One's better at attracting the electrons than the other. In your textbook, you have a ranking of electronegativity values. And the higher the number is, the more electronegative the atom is. And we see that these electronegativity values increase as we go from left to right across a period and decrease as we go down a family. And uh, if you remember the size um, trends of atoms, as we go from left to right across a period, atoms get smaller. And so the ability of that nucleus to pull electrons toward itself is going to, is going to increase and get stronger as the atom gets smaller. So as an atom gets smaller and its nuclear charge increases, an atom is better at pulling bonding electrons toward itself. Now notice that the noble gases are not included because typically they don't form bonds with other atoms. So this unequal sharing of electrons, if it occurs, leads to a separation of charge. The more electronegative element the element with the higher electronegativity value here is able to pull electrons closer to it and thus it has a higher electron density which causes a partial negative charge. The less electronegative element has less electron density and that's going to cause a partial positive charge. Now these partial charges are represented by the lowercase Greek letter delta so partial positive or partial negative. Now we're going to look at difference in electronegativity to help us determine, one, if the electrons are being shared equally or unequally, and two, to determine which atom has the partial negative and partial positive if electrons are being shared unequally. So when the electronegativity difference between two elements is anywhere from 0 to 0.4, we consider those bonding electrons to be shared equally. And that's what's known as a nonpolar bond. So nonpolar bond is another word for equal sharing of electrons. I'm not going to change the color while I'm doing this. It's going to take too long. When the electronegativity difference is between 0.4 and 2.1, 
then it is a polar bond, meaning there's an unequal sharing of electrons. And above 2.1, that's considered to be an ionic bond. So let's take a look at some bonds and figure out whether they're polar or not. And if they are polar, which atom has the partial positive and which has the partial negative? Okay, so if we look at this bond between carbon and nitrogen, what we need to do is we need to look at our table. So here's our table. Carbon 2.5, nitrogen 3. All right, so carbon had the smaller electronegativity value, so it gets the partial positive, and nitrogen had the larger electronegativity value, so it has the partial negative. These two electrons that are being shared, or it could be four or six, if we had a double and triple bond, are being shared unequally. Nitrogen is pulling more of those electrons toward itself and has a partial negative charge. Now, the difference between 2 and 2.5, or excuse me, between 2.5 and 3 is greater than 0.4, so this is a polar bond. All right, let's look at the next one. Uh, and polar, again, means unequal sharing. Let's look at oxygen and hydrogen. So if we look at our scale, oxygen is 3.5 and hydrogen is 2.1. So yeah, that's definitely very polar. And oxygen has the larger value, so it's going to have the partial negative. So oxygen gets the partial negative, and hydrogen gets the partial positive. All right, now let's look at nitrogen and chlorine. So if we look at nitrogen and chlorine, nitrogen is 3, chlorine is 3. They have the same electronegativity. So their electronegativity difference is less than 0.4. So this is going to be considered nonpolar. And the bonding electrons are going to be equally shared between both atoms.